Good morning, JCS. I'm happy to be here with you today. Today we'll share a sermon that's titled, Who Let the Dogs In? And you might think it's an odd title sermon, but you'll find out why I chose this title. And fortunately, we have four special guests today, and they are my homeroom girls. So we have Grace, Christine, Bella, and Kaylin. Thank you for joining us. Then let's start today by first reading the scripture, and the scripture is going to be from Genesis chapter 6, verse 13 through 22. We are going to have the girls read the verses for us. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it, and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Make a roof for it and finish the ark to within 18 inches of the top. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I am going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens, every creature that has the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the earth two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Now probably you know why I chose the title, Who Let the Dogs In? Today we'll talk about a sermon that I heard a few um, weeks back at my church and I wanted to share it with you because I got blessed through the sermon. The first question that I would like to um, address is why did God call us? Kaylin, why do you think God called us? Uh, I think God called us to love and worship Him. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's uh, read together this verse. I'll read it for you. It's from Matthew chapter 9, verses 36 through 37. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. This is one of the verses that Jesus is telling his disciples and he's looking at the people who do not believe in Jesus and he's having compassion for them because they look like sheep that didn't have a shepherd, they didn't have a leader. And he was saying that there are so many people who are non-believers but there are very few people who are actually believers and are trying to go and teach them about God and teach them about God's love. Then, uh, why do you think God called uh, Noah Bella, based on the scripture? Uh, to build an ark to save his family and animals. Mm -hmm. God called Noah to save his family and also the animals that were there. Now, why do we think God called us? Like Kaylin said, God called us so that we could share his love, we could share his word to others so others could be saved with us. And today I would like to share um, the vision God gave me and then he called me so that I could help save his children and teenagers that didn't believe in God. Now let's talk a little bit about Noah. Now Noah was a righteous person, that's why God went to Noah and God told Noah what his plan was. So his plan was to judge the world because the world was sinning. People were doing things God was telling them not to do or they were doing things, uh, they were not doing things that they were supposed to do. And God told Noah, but I found you to be righteous, then I would like you to build an ark so I could save you, your family, and the animals that I created. Then Noah obeyed and he built an ark and we think the ark is a very small boat but actually it's a very big ark. It's bigger than a soccer field. It's like more than 100 uh, meters long, about 20 uh, meters wide and more than 10 meters high. So it's a very big ark. Now in that ark, God was going to have the animals come in and Noah was going to have his family come into the ark so he could save them. 
But you might be saying, so that was very long time ago, and we don't have an ark now. We don't have to worry to some extent about floods. So how does Noah's、uh, story relate to us? And the way it relates to us is because at that time Noah had to build the ark so that he could save the people from God's judgment. Even now, because we are sinners and there are people who do not believe in God, they are going to face judgment. But God doesn't want them to face judgment. Then what God wants us to do is to tell them about Jesus, so they wouldn't face the judgment that God has for them. Now、um, we talked about so far why God called Noah. Now let's talk more about why God has called me. And Christine, after listening to Mrs. Joy's sermon a few weeks ago, she asked me a question about my dream. Christine, do you remember the question? Um, I think I asked you about was your dream a science teacher when you were young?、Mm-hmm. But being a science teacher wasn't really my dream. When I was younger, I wanted to become a doctor. But later on, I changed to becoming a teacher, an educator, and also, as many of you know, I live part of my life in the U.S. But now I am in Korea. So let me tell you a little bit about、uh, myself. So here, as you see, our little、uh, bird. I wanted to be a doctor, a medical doctor, so I could help people. And I did like science. I especially like biology because it tells you how different parts of your body works, especially the brain. I thought it was like a fascinating organ that God had created. And because of that, in high school, I had attended this program, which was a medical assistant program. It's a program. Where you learn how to give injections, you learn how to draw blood, you learn how to bandage. So it's like a helper for a nurse per se. So it's not a nurse, but you learn some skills similar to、uh, nurses. And after that, I went to college and I majored in biology. And even after graduating college, I wanted to become a doctor. So I went to work for a neurologist, so I could have experience in working with a doctor. But God had. Different plans. He didn't want me to become a doctor. He had other plans for me, and the plan that he had for me was to become an educator. And because of that, I went to graduate school. And here, among the clouds, <laughs> you see a picture of myself. This was during my direct teaching. I was teaching, I believe, it was third grade in LA. So you have to have experience teaching before they actually give you the credential and you become an official teacher. But as I finished my、uh, master's in education, and my husband had this、uh, vision of us building a Christian school later on, he thought that would be good to have the highest credential in education, and that would be a PhD. That's why I applied for a doctorate program at USC, and I graduated with,、um, I guess,、uh, <laughs> diploma in urban education policy. And I focus on educational psychology, so I could actually use what I learn in the future when we were to build that school. And this is my picture of my graduation. Then you can see how God has changed my dream or my path from the medical field to the education field. Now,、um, I lived half of my life in the U.S. And some of you might not really、uh, tell that I am not really like Korean. But when you talk to me for a long time in Korean, you will find out I don't have an accent per se. But I don't understand some of the words that you guys might be saying when we watch the news. I don't really understand a lot of what's going in the news when it's in Korean. But、uh, God moved me from the U.S. to Korea, and I had not lived in Korea before. So for about how many years? Thirty more years, I had not lived in Korea, so it was the first time I came to Korea when my husband actually moved, and God moved us to Korea. And here you can see a picture of me, and I was pregnant with、uh, Brandon, Emily's、uh, brother, and this was when I was seven months pregnant. I came to Korea, and the reason I came to Korea was not just to. So my vision was not just to save children and teenagers so that they could believe in God. But God was more specific in that He wanted me to witness to Korean children and Korean teenagers living in Korea. Now, as Noah decided to obey God and build the ark, and I tried to follow God's work in trying to save children in Korea, what do you guys think what、uh, God would be doing while we are trying to do His work? 
Grace? Uh, he will help us and he will guide us and he will always be with us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And if we read the verse together, it says, But seek first the kingdom, his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. In this verse, God promises if we seek his will first, if we do his work first, he is going to take care of us. He's going to provide us with what we need. Then in Noah's case, Grace, what do you think God gave him to be able to build the ark? Uh, the materials for the ark, all the resources, and good health. Mm -hmm. Yes, so God provided Noah what he needed to build the ark and be able to bring not only his family, but the animals as well. And I, as I was trying to do God's work here in Korea in saving his children and teenagers, God also provided me with these different things like people, also finances, and the passion for his children. Now here you will see, if we go back to Noah's story, that Noah didn't have to have only himself working on the ark because remember, it was a very big ark. He needed to have his children and his uh, children's wives to actually help him build the ark. But even until then, there was no rain. So people had never seen rain, but God was telling Noah, I'm going to send this rain that's not going to end for a long time and everything will be destroyed. And when Noah would tell that to other people or when he would be working on the R, you can imagine there would be a lot of people like pointing fingers at him saying, you know, he's crazy. How can water come down from the sky? That's not possible. So I think Noah also needed to have that um, courage to still do his work even though he might have people making fun of him. Now Christine, you can imagine that Noah has to have all these different animals <laughs> in the ark. So how do you think he actually brought all the animals to the ark? I think God gave Noah um, to a power to communicate with the animals and Noah talked to the animals to come and then if they did not listen, I think Noah gave them treats to come follow him. I see. Thank you. Those are some ideas that we might have on how Noah was actually able to bring all the animals. Imagine, you know, having a lion or a tiger there and telling them, come kitty, come this way. and. You know, he has other bigger animals trying to give them treats or leave like a trail of food for them to follow him. But we do not know the exact way Noah brought them to the ark, but it was God who brought them all, brought all the animals in, right? Because Noah couldn't just go search everywhere for every single species out there, but God made the animals come to Noah so he could save those animals. And here are some pictures that remind us that it was not Noah himself, but it was God that led the animals into the ark. Now, when God called me, what I decided to do with my husband and our church was to create um, education ministry. So we started the education ministry at our church in 2016. Back then, I was the director. We had one more um, education pastor. We had one teacher and we had one student. And that was for about like two months, just us giving service. And we had rented an uh, academy room. It was not even a church space that we had because we didn't have enough space at the location. But years later, now it's 2021, so five years later, you can see how God has blessed our education ministry. We have now about four youth pastors. We have more than 150 children and teenagers that attend our school. And now we don't have to rent places, but we have our own place to give service. And I'll show you a few pictures of back in the day. So this was at the beginning of maybe 2016. This was the only student we had. So this student had the attention of almost three adults just to himself. And this was at a hagwon that we had to rent just on Sundays for our service. And after we had more students coming in, we moved to another place. And this was a place we rented and we gave service together here. We were praising from kindergarten, preschool to, um, I think we had up to sixth grade. And as you can see, it looks very disorganized because we had to use the room, not just for service room, but also as a dining place. So whenever we were done with service in the elementary uh, ministry, we'll have to like, rearrange the table so we could have lunch there. 
And now you can see how different the setting is. This is one of the rooms. This is for our elementary ministry. And the people that you see there are the current teachers. So we had only one teacher, but now we have more than 20 teachers serving together at our church. We also have locations that are ours now. We don't have to be sharing it with other people per se. It's just a church place where the children can give service without uh, getting bothered. So while I was serving at the ministry, I was usually in charge of the elementary ministry, but I also uh, covered for other ministries when there were no other uh, pastors. Then you might be saying, then is it a good thing? Am I still working there as an education pastor? But unfortunately, I am not at the moment. And why? So why am I not there when my husband started it with me and God has blessed us so far? It was because after about three years, I got burned out. As you know, it was the first time I was living in Korea. So I had to adjust a new life in Korea where I didn't have close family members in Korea. I also had to learn how to do things in Korea because they are different from the way we usually do in the U.S. And also some values are different. Like I value honesty a lot. I value hard work a lot, but those values are not emphasized as much in Korea as is in the U.S. Then what I decided to do was I just thought I would focus on a professional job rather than a church job. And that's when I started teaching again. I taught uh, preschoolers and also that's how I came to this school actually, JCS. But a few weeks ago, when I was listening to this uh, sermon of Noah at church, God was um, asking me, you know, so why did I call you? You know, why are you in Korea right now? So why did I let you get a PhD? And that is when it um, hit me. It reminded me, so why am I here? And that's when I started thinking, am I, you know, here? Am I teaching? Am I working? Just because. I want to have a comfortable financial life because I'm going to be raising my children and they'll be studying at private schools, they will be going uh, abroad to study. But I didn't think that was the purpose that I had in life. Then I started wondering, then well, why am I not going back to the education ministry because I've been not participating for about two years now. So what was preventing me from going back? So one of the things was the challenges I had before. I had problems with interacting with other people and just thinking about it. It's like I didn't want to go through that again. And the other part was if I were to start um, a, a Christian school, and I don't have experience you know, building a Christian school from scratch, especially in Korea, I had this fear that I might fail. What if we build a school, we have students, but it's not enough? What if we go bankrupt? And I didn't want to bear that um, heavy load with me. But the other thing that I thought that was preventing me from really trying to do God's work was that I no longer had passion for His children. I didn't have that compassion that I had when I just came to Korea. Then. During that sermon, what the pastor said and reminded me was, I never thought, like many times when I heard about Noah's story, so who let the animals in? Who brought the animals? I, for some reason, I never thought of that, but during the sermon, that just struck me. You know, Noah was just faithful. He was building the ark. He didn't go out everywhere to get the ants, to get the tigers, to get the giraffe, or to get all the animals. He was just building the ark and God just brought the animals. And that reminded me that when, if I were to do God's work again, God was going to fill with whatever I would need. If I would need money for the school, He would bless us with the money. If I were to need teachers for the school, He would bring the teachers, He would bring the students. So I just had to have that leap of faith, just give that step of obeying God and following God and just trusting God. And I would like to us getting concluding in the sermon with Bella uh, reading the verse for us. The verse is Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. 
But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and the, all these things will be given to you as well. Now, after the sermon, I was praying and I was asking God to help me remember why I was here, why he had called me, and to help me trust that he was going to be with me and he was going to provide me whatever I needed to do his work. And to wrap up, today's uh, sermon. I would like to ask Helene to share again the two questions that we address in this sermon. The two questions were, why did God call us and what does God do while we do his work? Okay, thank you. I would like to thank our guest today. Thank you for being with us and I would like to end with a prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this opportunity to share um, my testimony with the JCN's family. I pray that through this testimony that um, I will remember again the reason you have sent me to this land and why you have uh, given me the experiences that I had had so far. I pray that this uh, sermon would also remind our students and our staff and our families um, the purpose you have for our lives that is uh, not only to have a good job, to have money and live comfortably, but you have called us to save others, God. Not just for us to go and be with you forever by ourselves, but also bring other people to you, God. Uh, lastly, I pray that you will give us uh, the faith that we need and the obedience that we need to follow your word, especially help us trust that you'll be with us and that you'll provide us when um, we do your work. We love you, God. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.